How's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. There exists an endless list of reasons why me and you and everybody else loves anime, but one in particular that really stands out for me at least is the fact that a lot of anime is able to betray your expectations. And I mean that in both a good way and a bad way. That's why in a lot of cases I think it's quite difficult to judge an anime just off of pre-existing information like the synopsis or the commercial artwork. Because anime is a medium that especially likes to take creative risks and loves to challenge its viewers to give them something that they've never seen before or perhaps give them something that they never thought could exist in the first place. A lot of times I would try and explain the premise or how great a particular anime show is to someone who has either never seen anime or has never seen that particular anime before and I don't know if it's just me trying to explain it or me being terrible at explaining it but nine times out of the ten the response is something like that sounds like you just made it up on the spot. It especially happens every time I try and explain the likes of series like Fully Coolie. If you've seen it, you know exactly what I mean. Now, there are plenty of anime series that have managed to betray our expectations to varying levels of success. Gakko Gurashi managed to fool us with the Moe art style by showing us some of the most horrifying and gruesome images that we never expected to see out of such cute Moe blob characters. While School Days managed to fool us with its seemingly innocent school romance vibe by providing us with one of the most disappointing and fucked up endings in modern anime history. Hashtag never forget. Whether you like these series or not is a completely different story, but regardless, these kinds of series at the end of the day manage to shock us, surprise us, betray our expectations by making it seem like it is something, but then completely turning the tables on us by taking it in a completely different direction thanks to its storytelling, its characters, its plot progression, and everything mixed in together. And a lot of the times whether you do end up liking them or disliking them, those are the shows that get people talking. I mean, nobody expected Madoka Magica to be as fucked up as it was, and at the same time, nobody expected the Monogatari series to be such a mindfuck in all of its glorious ways. Look, if I have any chance to talk about how fucking amazing the Monogatari series is, your boy's gonna to take every opportunity that he can get. But the anime we're going to be talking about today kind of fits into that realm and it's a currently airing season as of the recording of this video, but it's a series that nobody is really talking about for some reason. And to be honest, isn't really getting the attention that I think it absolutely deserves. There's a show called Shoujo Shumatsu Ryoko or Girls Last Tour that I can safely say is an anime that manages to betray my expectations over and over again. But also at the same time, being a show that theoretically shouldn't even work. But somehow, it still does. How does that work? Well, today we're going to quickly explore as to why that may be the case. So let's examine. Now, I would usually start these kinds of videos by telling you guys the premise of the show and what exactly the show is about, what the story is about, but when it comes to Girls Last Tour, it honestly doesn't really matter. Because not only is the story not the most important part of the show, but it's an element that not even the characters of the show itself care about. The only thing you really need to know about Girls Last Tour is that it's a post-apocalyptic show, so naturally, it's not going to be the most uplifting or happy series that we've seen yet. I mean, who can honestly say that shows like Evangelion, Ergo Proxy, and Shinsekai Yori got you in a heartwarming, uplifting, giddy mood? Unless your sense of emotion, of course, is completely destroyed thanks to the ending of School Days, then I say not a lot of people fall into this category. But at the same time, this show is also classified as an Iyashike slice of life. Now, if you know what that means, then at this point, you're probably already very confused as to what the hell this show even is. For those of you who don't know, Yashiki is a subgenre of Slice of Life that focuses on healing or comforting the audiences by showing them cute moe girls or boys doing all sorts of cute things in their everyday lives. Some examples of Yashiki Slice of Life include Hidamari Sketch, New Game, and Is the Order a Rabbit? In other words, these are shows that are the complete opposite of dark post-apocalyptic shows. And blending these two elements together into a series is kind of like trying to make a horror comedy or a shonen shoujo show. It might be cool if it was a thing, but theoretically and practically, it's probably not going to be something that works very well. But Girls Last Tour manages to work the post-apocalyptic setting with the Iyashike characters by just showing these two girls being content with the situation they are put in. 
And that's an important theme this show prioritizes itself in. It's this feeling of being contempt with hopelessness. In most post-apocalyptic anime, the characters are trying their hardest to survive or combat the situation that the world has put themselves in. Whether that be to fight back against the evil that caused the world to be a post-apocalyptic wasteland in the first place, or to turn against other survivors in a free-for-all bloodbath and take advantage of the deranged world they're trapped in. But the characters in Girls Last Tour are very different. In fact, you can almost say they're the most realistic characters when it comes to a post-apocalyptic setting. We don't exactly know what caused the world to fall into an apocalypse, as at this point the anime hasn't gone into detail as to how it even happened, but every character in this series honestly doesn't care about that to begin with. Both main characters are content that this is basically their life now. They have nowhere they particularly want to go, they have no objective, they have no passion or goal. All they have is a lot of questions. What is a house? What is music? What is hopelessness? All these questions that inadvertently give you a little glimpse into what kind of world they grew up in, and the way of life these girls live every day in, without explicitly showing everything to us viewers. Which I think is an absolutely fantastic way of storytelling. It gives time for us to grow attached to these characters, but at the same time, it gives time for the circumstances of the world they live in to kind of flesh out in itself without any need for exposition. I find in most post-apocalyptic shows like this, there's always either someone or something that explains what happened to the world and why the world became this apocalyptic mess in the first place. But in the case with Girls Last Tour, we don't know what happened and in all honesty, we shouldn't really care what happened because that's not the point of the show. I'd like to compare this anime to a game called Journey. Now if you've played this game before, you'd know that, as the title suggests, it's not about the end goal but rather all about the journey. We don't care what the main character we play as is or where he's going or what happened to the world. All we care about is the world at large as of right now, the sights and smells of what the world has become and how our main character and ultimately us, the player, ventures through it. Girls Last Tour does this in the same vein by relying heavily on things like atmospheric backgrounds, limited colour palettes and an ambient and atmospheric soundtrack that perfectly sets the current mood of the show at that point. But isn't it strange that the anime still manages to make you feel good with its Yashke vibes when, if you think about it, the position that the girls are put in in the story are fucking horrible. They're in a situation where civilization is basically completely dead. Any survivors can die at literally any time. And that the people who do end up surviving have most likely no way of going back to the way of life that they were living before this apocalypse happened. But the fact that these girls from the very beginning are content with the fact that, well, this is our life and this is how we're probably going to live and die our entire lives, strangely enough gives us this feeling of ease to us viewers. We don't really think about the horrible fate of these girls because the girls themselves don't think about it either. One thing I absolutely love about the show is the way that it can provoke thought just by hearing the conversations of the two main characters. At first it may seem like just regular useless banter that cute moe girls tend to do in these kinds of Iashke shows, but if you pay attention to what these girls have to say, a lot of it is very thought provoking and very important to understanding the backstory of these characters and the central theme of the entire show. Again, instead of using simple flashbacks or exposition, the anime uses casual conversation to really flesh out the backstory of these characters and the setting that they're in. Just by hearing the girls ask simple questions like, what is cheese? What is chocolate? What is God and why is he so important? And discussing those questions as they explore the world really shows you what kind of mindset they're living within. While at the same time really making the audience reflect on things that perhaps they took for granted up until they watched this terrible situation that these girls are in. And it ultimately drives this very strong sense of this contempt with hopelessness, when at the end of every episode, all these questions and discussions they engage in don't really succumb to anything past that one episode. It's nothing more than something to pass the time for these girls, because at the end of the day, these kinds of conversations are meaningless. Either way, these girls fully know that whatever they do discuss and talk about is not going to change the fact that they are ultimately stuck in this world of hopelessness. And I 
think that is such an interesting way of storytelling, especially when it comes to these kinds of genres of anime. And again, theoretically, if you think about it, this show shouldn't work. A show like this, where an entire episode is taken up on girls discussing what an aeroplane is while trying to look for food to survive the next day, only to not really care what an aeroplane even is and end up finding food, should be the most boring, useless waste of a time anime, theoretically. But the way the anime manages to flesh out everything from its characters, to its settings, to its plotline, to just all the atmospheric things that make this anime so strangely engaging. And while managing to do all of that in a very thought-provoking and humbling way, it just works. It was actually so weird to catch myself watching this anime at some parts, with a smile on my face. Like, why would I be smiling watching a show about two girls trying to survive a post-apocalyptic world that is full of hopelessness and just full of despair and is a world and a situation that these girls know they're not going to get out of? Why would a seemingly dark and depressing premise like this be able to also give me this warm and fuzzy feeling on the inside. Even after trying to analyze the show in this video, I still fully don't understand why that might be the case, but it certainly does give me a reason to love and truly appreciate what this show can do. This show isn't just your everyday ESHK slice of life, and it's not just your everyday post-apocalyptic survival story either. It's a show that betrays your expectations when you first enter it, and as you keep going, it keeps and keeps on betraying your expectations in so many ways. And I think it's a show that a lot of people will actually get into and be completely enthralled in if they just gave it a go. But again, unfortunately, this anime is extremely underrated this season. Nobody is really talking about this anime, and no one's really even watching this anime. But the people that I've seen who have and are watching this anime have all said how amazing this show is. Oh, and also we can't forget that the main characters dab during the opening credits. Yeah. And you all know that that alone already makes this show a 10 out of 10 for your boy. Got he. But guys, let me know what you think about this. If you are watching Girls Last Tour, what do you think about it? Do you enjoy it? Do you not enjoy it? Do you see it as a show that's thought-provoking and interesting like me? Or do you have another way of looking at it? Always, guys, let me know all that kind of stuff in the comments below. And look, just a full disclaimer, as of the recording of this video, only six episodes have come out. And, you know, it might end horribly. I honestly don't know at this point. If you're watching this in the future, then you probably already know how it ended. But I'm just hoping that they continue on with this amazing show and don't fuck it up like they did with Cut on the Right Answer. So pissed about that. You can also let me know your thoughts and opinions on Girls Last Tour or any other show by following me over on my Twitter. Uh, just tweet at me. I read all of your guys' tweets and you can enjoy my shit posting in the meantime. And also a special thank you to Arya Man Varma. I created this for Joey and it's very long. Beautiful username. F and X, Crescentia, Kobe Johnson, Uncle MIB, Jonan Hart, Iochi, Corey Williams, Tristan T, Ralph Cristobal, and everybody else on my Patreon who supports me every single month. If you like what I do and you want to support me on my future videos, then the best place to do it is over on my Patreon. I've got a bunch of great rewards for you guys that you current patrons are enjoying, hopefully, so if you'd like to join in on that, click that first link in the description below to support your boy. Anyways guys, thanks for watching, as always like and favorite if you enjoy, subscribe for more on Banner, and I'll see you guys next video of whatever I make. Keep watching anime. Johnny.